case anything goes horribly wrong. Um, okay, so hopefully that's me online. Um, and I can't actually see myself on the live stream. Oh, here we go, maybe. Hopefully I'm up. See how we go. Anyway, uh, let me know if you can hear me in the live chat. Uh, although apparently um, I can't be loaded on my system anyway, so I might have to refresh that page as well. I'll get going in a second. I'm just uh, dealing with these little issues and then we'll be up and running. So, okay. There we go. I think I can see the live chat now. So um, hopefully that's going to be okay. Right. Anyway, despite those issues, um, let me uh, make a start. So what day is it today? It's Wednesday and um, uh, this therefore must be day 16. Um, good, which is, that's a lot of days. Right, so <laughs> day 16 um, and we're going to pick up from where we left off yesterday. So at the very end of yesterday, um, I was discussing how to use the SRA toolkit to download fast queue files from um, from the sequence read archive. So we set up a new Conda environment for our new RNA seq project. Uh, we installed the S we installed SRI tools into that Conda environment, and then we used uh, fast queue dump to download fast queue from um, directly from the SRA. And I know that there there's been some comments on on YouTube and, and also I've had some, some direct messages on Twitter as well. And there are some people who have struggled a little bit with getting the SRE toolkit to work correctly. Um, so I've just been looking into it. Uh, it looks like the error that people are getting, which is quite a cryptic error message, um, should hopefully just be, uh, I think it's just indicative of connection problems. So it should hopefully be transitory. And if you try it again, at a different time, hopefully you'll have more success. Uh, the other thing that I've also looked at doing, because it may be that this will work more reliably, is actually downloading, um, rather than downloading the fast queue directly, downloading the SRA file, and then using fast queue dump. Instead of using fast queue dump as a mechanism for downloading, using it as a mechanism for converting from the SRA file that you've downloaded to fast queue. Um, which is kind of what fast queue dump is really meant for. Um, I was just testing that out um, just before four, so I had an SRA file downloading, um, and they it's okay. So that's indicative of my network problems that I've got uh, going on right now. Um, that um, my download failed. Uh, so SRA tools includes this uh, binary called prefetch. Uh, which is a, an NCBI tool for downloading um, from their databases. So prefetch and then the name of, uh, then the accession that we were looking at yesterday should download an SRA file. So in this case, uh, it's run, but it hasn't finished. So I've got, uh, I've got this SRR directory, which is the name of that. That's the accession. Uh, and in there, had it completed, I would hope that there would be an SRA file. So we can try that again. I'm going to set that running again just while I'm talking um, and we'll see if this works. So this is an alternative way of rather than using fast queue dump, which would be my preference, I think. Um, but rather than, than that, this is a potentially a way of, of getting this data as well. So to do a prefetch. Um, OK, so there we go. I'll run that again and we'll see if that has any more success this time the sra files um, there's every chance that they're bigger than the fast queue so the fast queue that we downloaded yesterday i'm just going to switch over to my other tab um, so the fast queue that we downloaded yesterday it actually finished uh, the download finished not long after um not long after the live stream yesterday so it took another sort of three or four minutes after the live stream finished to finish downloading uh, you can see it's 305 meg and that's in its um that's in this gzip compressed 
form. So uh, a little word about about compression here. Um, so um, of compressing uh, text-based data. So it works well as a means of taking something like fast queue data, which has the tendency to be very large, uh, and reducing the amount of space that it takes up on the disk. Uh, your your Zubuntu uh, installation will have the gzip binary. So gzip um, is the tool by which we can we can uh, compress an existing file. So uh, if we let's have a look, uh, let's go into week three and compress a file that doesn't probably doesn't really need compressing. Uh, we don't need the SRR file in there. Let's get rid of that. There we go. Uh, right. So um, how about our muscle input .fast a file, which is not not very big. Uh, so it's about 11k uh, gzip and then the name of the file will um, will compress that file so that will apply gzip compression to that file uh, with an 11k file it will work very quickly uh, and now if we relist you'll see that our original file our muscle input dot fast a file is now gone uh, and in its place, we have muscle input dot fast a dot gz. So this is the gzip compressed ver compressed version of the same file. Uh, and instead of being 11k, it is now 3.6k. So you can see that even with such a small file, it's about a quarter of the size that it was when we when we started. Uh, you can also undo the compression, and you can do that um, in several ways, but. But the the simplest is to use uh, instead of gzip to use gunzip, so gunzip, uh, and then the name of the file that you want to unzip. So muscle input .fast a .gz. Uh, Our tab complete there was is being clever. So uh, I pressed when I pressed the tab with where I just typed the mus. Despite the fact we've got muscle input .fast a .gz, muscle output .aln, muscle output .fast a, for all these different um, things which start with MUS, only one of them is a gzip compressed file and our tab completion is clever enough to know that. So when I press the tab there to complete uh, to complete the name of the file, it guessed that I wanted the one gzip compressed file that's in the current directory. Um, so gunzip muscle underscore input dot fast a dot gz will uncompress that file and again the gz file will disappear and we'll have our muscle input .fast a file back again. Um, and again, if we ls lh, you will see that it's gone back up to 11k. So that's uh, gzip compression. Um, it's relatively straightforward to use um, uh, and relatively easy um, to uh, to apply and to undo as well. We downloaded our SRA data yesterday, and as we downloaded it, we applied compression to it. That was one of the uh, arguments, one of the options that we that we supplied to FastQ Dump was to gzip the output, um, and so that output is has gzip compression applied to it. We can uncompress it in exactly the same way as I just did with the FastA file. Um, in this instance. Um, it will take a little bit longer because it's a bigger file. So it will, it will, the system will have a little uh, think about how long this will take, um, and it will write the output to the disk. Uh, but in this case, again, our file is going to get much bigger. So it's going to go from the I've forgotten now three hundred and five. Yeah, 305 megabytes that the gzipped file is. It will probably go up to around about a gig. Um, I would imagine when it's uncompressed. So there you go, that's finished. Uh, again, my gzipped version of the file is gone, and I just have an uncompressed version of the file, and you can see it's 1.3 gig, so it's much bigger than the compressed version. And that's why, by preference, we want to keep these files under gzip compression as much as we possibly can, because we don't want to use the, ex the extra disk dis space that's required um, if you have, if you're holding them uncompressed, also most of the tools that we will use, 
Uh, in fact, I can't I can't think of many tools now that that we'll be making use of. Um, will the the none of these tools under, don't fail to understand the gzipped version. So you can pass a gzipped version of the file into the tools that we're going to use without having to uncompress it on the disk, and the tools will deal with that just fine. So there's no real... We don't really have a motivation for, for storing an unzipped version of these files. So I'm going to re recompress that fastq file using gzip. Um, okay, so um, that's gzip compression. Uh, in the case uh, now of downloading the SRA file, so prefetch now has downloaded um, successfully the SRA file. So now in our in that SRR one one four one two two one five directory, we have uh, the SRA file that's been downloaded by prefetch. Um, um, Let's have a look at how big that is. So that's it's actually smaller than the fastq, which is interesting. I didn't expect that. Um, so that's the SRA file that's downloaded, and then we can use fastq dump um, dump to and point it at the file. I'm going to produce the output to standard out uh, rather than producing it into a file. Um, uh, and if you point it at the SRA file, uh, and I'm doing this, this is again something I haven't tried, so um, so um, this isn't necessarily going to work first time, uh, but this should hopefully take that SRA file and produce, there you go, so it's producing fastq, uh, and it's doing that to standard output, because that's what I asked it to do with the dash z argument. Um, so... Um, uh, to uh, Martina in the comments, I'm just I'm showing the SRA download as an alternative means because some people struggled yesterday with uh, getting S uh, fastq dump to work at the command line, so I wanted to provide an alternative way um, for 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 people to download uh, this data should they need to. Um, so you can see fastq dump is producing the data um, at the command line. I've just terminated that process with with control c just to stop that from happening um, we can um, let me just uh, fiddle with this a little bit um, so let's rather than doing control z um, no actually let, let's let let's do that and then let's do um, it's um, Def line dash dash def line qual plus just to get rid of you can see that in our fast queue entries here we've got here is the header line of the fast queue uh, so the at symbol is like the greater than symbol in our fast a entries that we've already looked at uh, and then you've got the sequence data and then here is the the qual the def line for the qual which starts with a plus and then is repeating the identifier. Well, that's unnecessary uh, text. We don't need that information on that line, which is the, so what the def line qual argument it does here is remove that text from that line and make it just a plus. Um, and then because this is producing the output to standard out, we can we can pipe that into um, um, uh, gzip, I think. Um, and I just got to remember how to get the output out of gzip. Um, hold on, let's uh, let's highlight that. I think it's dash c, but I'm just going to check. Um, man gzip. So you can get gzip to print as output to standard output, which is what I'm going to do, and then and then redirect it to a file. Um, I think it's dash c for concatenate. Yes, it is. So dash C will make uh, gzip produce its output on the on, on, uh, to standard out. So what you can do is you can pipe the standard out from your fastq dump. Yeah, hold on. Um, oh, I highlighted it. So you, you can... Let's do this again. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of... 
I realise that I'm kind of making this up as I go along, but that's because I'm making it up as I go along. Uh, so um, there you go. Pipe that to gzip with a dash C to produce it to standard output and then pipe that to a file, um, which will be, uh, let's just do test.fastq.gz fastq.gz there you go uh, so that will um, fastq dump for the from the SRA file rather than from the SRA accession uh, will produce the fastq to standard output which we will then pipe through gzip onto the into a file that's gone a lot faster than I expected it to um, which suggests to me that something hasn't worked. Yeah, that's unsurprising. Um, let's just go back to the fast queue dump on its own. Have I got the have I got the the argument wrong? I think I've probably got the argument wrong. Um, oh yes, of course I need to actually give it. There you go. That working? Right, that's working. Right, so now. Um, we go back to here we go back to here and put in the plus and I didn't mean to do quite so much working out of stuff live what's that no data 404 I think that's okay I think it's, set, it's looked for that accession uh, at the SRA and and clearly not found it, um, but then it's still doing stuff. So it's now it's found the file. So I think the first thing it does is it looks for the accession and then it looks for the file. So then it found it the file. It found the file and it's and it's printing. Uh, it's now sending that fast queue into my test.fastq.gz file. Okay, so. Um, which again is going to be a growing file so you can see that that's it's 80 meg at the moment and will get slowly bigger um, so that's an alternative way of getting the data if the um, direct fast queue dump from the accession didn't work for you uh, there's every op there's every chance that 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 command will work today even if it didn't work yesterday because i think um my impression is that it's a that it's a kind of temporary connection issue rather than anything else but i did want to explore alternative ways of people getting this data because I, I really don't want people to be left without the data uh, that would be a that would be a real problem so um so there's two ways that we can get this data uh, for what we're going to do today, I'm going to stick with what we did yesterday. So I'm going to download the fast queue using fast queue dump. Okay. Um, so what we need to do today, then, to to stop rambling about alternatives to yesterday and to start thinking about what we're going to do today, is we want to download um, this these this data from the geo entry that I have talked about. Uh, but I'm aware I have not yet shown you. So let's have a look at the geo entry um, that we're going to be working with um, over the next couple of weeks. So um, um, obviously something went wrong with the whiteboard. That's always the case. Uh, we'll just refresh that and see if we can get a picture of the day. So I've actually got Jacob to draw me one today. Um, a bit last minute, but uh, I'm really struggling with this whiteboard today. So I, I will come back to that later, I think. Um, but, um, okay, gene expression omnibus. So um, Geo is a repository originally designed for sharing microarray data. Um, so it's it ha has always been about gene expression, although increasingly it's about functional genomics. So not just... Um, microarrays and these days RNA sequencing, but also things like chip seek experiments uh, and attack seek experiments and things like that also sh you tend to be shared via geo. Um, it's been around for a long time. Uh, it's 
it's run to robust standards uh, and it's kind of the accepted way of sharing gene expression data with the community um, and so um, when we started this I had a look around for uh, appropriate data sets and and unsurprisingly at the time sort of four or five weeks ago I couldn't really find anything uh, but since we started there there are now um, SARS-CoV-2 data sets available um, and this is the first one that I found and this is the one that I'm going to focus on um, so um, the generally speaking so this is a geo entry which has been changing uh, at, while I've been watching it actually um, so it began with 20 samples um, of uh, either mock treated or SARS-CoV-2 infected um, lung epithelium cells uh, it has over time increased uh, in its size to involve other um cell types and now as of i noticed yesterday anyway um uh, some samples from ferrets which i'm not entirely sure i understand quite why they're using ferrets but that's fine maybe somebody can tell us um so ferrets infected with with influenza a um so there's ferret samples in here as well uh, there's also now covid19 patient samples um, which I'm not necessarily going to suggest we look at right now, but we may we may be able to look at um, in time. Um, okay, so um, this is the data set. Okay, so GSE one four seven five zero seven. So uh, if you've not got this up, uh, the thing to do is just to Google that accession. Okay, so uh, GSE one four seven five zero seven should give you as the top hit the geo accession viewer which is the page that i was just on um, for that data set so gse 147507 is the is the geo accession that we're looking at um, and so geo gives you summary and a design uh, and then a list of all of the samples so these are all of the samples that are collected here in this geo entry so you can see that we've got the uh, N NHBE mock and SARS-CoV-2, the A549 mock and SARS-CoV-2, um, and some other things besides in that initial experiment that was that was submitted, uh, and then the Calu3. These are the uh, I think these are the ferrets. Um, oh no, the ferrets are the ferrets. Sorry, take it back. Uh, so you can see that there's lots of uh, different um, lots of different things in here sort of different experiments um, and what I'm gonna focus on initially is these samples at the top so um, GSM 4432378 through to GSM 4432389 so so 36912 samples which are n of three for mock infected and SARS-CoV-2 infected uh, cell lung cell lines, so two different human lung cell lines. Um, so that is going to be our initial focus, those 12 samples at the top there. Um, we may expand out to look at the other samples later, but initially those are the ones that I'm going to download. Okay, so um, we want to be able to download the data for those 12 samples. In order to do that, we need to go and look at this data on the SRA. So in the geo entry, we have all of the information about the about the samples in geo. So GSM is the sample ID in geo. Um, and um, we're looking at different platform IDs. So this is the platform ID for the for sequencing uh, human data on a NextSeq 500, um, and the same for the for the ferret there. Um, and so this is all the geo information. But linked to this geo entry, uh, if we scroll down a bit, is an SRA entry. So this uh, SRA entry here is the project is this equivalent project on uh, on the sequence read archive. And that's where we want to download this data from. Um, because we're 
uh, doing a practical exercise in in producing the quantification from the fast queue we want to download the fast queue uh, we could download count tables so raw raw read count tables from geo so they have that that derived data here as well um, and you could we could download that and and work with the count data directly but actually uh, in terms of the egg the practical exercise that we want to do what we want to undertake here is that is working with the fast queue so hence that's what we're going to do is we're going to focus on downloading the fast queue so i'm going to open this sra project accession srp 253951 so um this is that project at the sra and we've got all of our uh this lists all of our all of the experiments um for this particular uh, project so he, this is each of those samples that was in the geo entry is replicated here in the sra entry for the same for the same experiment so there are 101 samples so they're all represented here um, with a little description and we can click through on any of those samples so if we go uh, i think probably along to the last page of these so this is the first of those samples that we wanted to download, GSM4432378. Um, we can click through on that to look at the sample information should we want to. So, um, okay, so it's four Illumina NextSeq runs. That's actually the four lanes on a, on a NextSeq. Uh, so it's actually a single run just across, spread across four lanes. Um, and that's because of the way that the NextSeq works. Um, 17 million spots, that's 17 million reads. Uh, 2.2 uh, gigabases um, and and it's the downloads would be uh, 890 um, uh, megabytes so the best part of a gigabyte of data um, and there's a description of um, the library and various other things here as well as those four uh, SRR accessions here which are the four NextSeq runs that make up this one sample so each of our 12 samples is going to be represented by four um by four srr accessions and that's for the four lanes for each sample uh, so if i can get my whiteboard to work here uh, for some reason this is not at all what is actually on my whiteboard at the moment i'm gonna refresh this one more time just bear with me uh, see if we can get this to work and there's yesterday's picture of the day. It's unintentionally come up. I'm sure Noah will be happy about his artwork being front and centre again. Um, so just refreshing the whiteboard again to try and get it to reflect what's actually on my whiteboard on my tablet. Um, I'm so glad I choose these technological solutions to everything that works so robustly. Um, so whiteboard just doesn't want to play ball today for some reason. Um, I think it's probably related to the fact that my internet really doesn't want to play ball today. Uh, I had an interesting Zoom call earlier on this afternoon, which um, was more than a little bit frustrating uh, in terms of connection issues. So today's just been one of those days for my internet. Generally, I, I benefit from living a little bit out in the sun, but today doesn't seem to have been one of those days, which is a little bit of a shame. Um it's actually struggling on my tablet as well, which is I'm I may just give this up as a bad job for today. Um, okay, um, I'll see if I can come back to it. But uh, let's um, actually let's turn that off there. Oh look, it's worked. Of course it has. Just as I give it up as a bad job. Here we go. Whiteboard is. Jacob's picture of the day, or at least some of Jacob's picture of the day. Uh, we've already had a TIE fighter from Jacob on one of the days, I think. Um, today it's meant to be a TIE fighter and an X-Wing. Uh, continuing our Star Wars theme. Um, but um, it seems that only some of it has synced up. I will do one more refresh, and then I will stop waffling about technical problems and start actually trying to teach you something. Um it's been a, an interesting day for that today, and I apologise for that. Uh, but what you see is what you get very much with these live streams, as I'm sure you've all figured out by now. Uh, so, um, 
totally giving this up as a bad job in a minute. Um, right, fine. Let's go back to the SRA and um, we'll go back to the SRA and we'll uh, we'll show you how to get to the information for these runs. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the, this is the main entry for the project on um, the SRA. And one of the things it says here is uh, view results as an expanded interactive table using the run selector. And the run selector is a fairly new um, innovation from the SRA, which is actually a really, uh, a really helpful, um, a really helpful way of viewing these results and actually downloading the table as well. Uh, it's just quite a useful thing to be able to do. So I'm going to send these results to the run selector. So this is going to send these 101 samples, which is all of the samples in this project, not just the 12 that we're interested in at this point. You're going to send this, this project to the run selector. So I'm going to open a new tab again um, to send those results to the run selector. And um, my chuggy chuggy internet is going to struggle slightly to open this there we go so this is the run selector so uh, this lets you um, uh, view this the metadata for these samples in this tabular form so we've got this table here which has our SRR accessions for each of our runs and it has the both the bio sample which is kind of a general ncbi identifier across multiple databases and also the geo accession itself here telling you which sample though these things represent so each of these samples um has as i was mentioning before has four entries so we've got um for geo accession gsm4432378 we have four runs so one two three four runs for that one um for that one accession um so we in order to get that one sample we need to download each of these four um sra identifiers and you will notice that the first one of those is the one that we downloaded yesterday as our test okay so um it's not completely futile the one that we downloaded so um we can download uh this data uh, based on these accessions. So we've got all of the SRR accessions here that we need to download. Um, but of course, we don't want all of this data. We don't want all 101 samples. We want, uh, what we want is those first 12 samples. So the one, it's the, the first 12 are the three mock treated NHBE cells, the three SARS CoV 2 infected NHBE cells and then the same for A549 cells so again mock treatment SARS-CoV-2 infected um, so that takes up that first uh, so there's going to be 48 entries so on this in this particular table we've got 50 entries on this first page we want the first 48 of those because that's the first 12 samples four some four files per sample 12 samples we can use the run selector to filter this down a bit so we can use the run selector to try and reduce this table down to those 48 entries if at all possible so we know that uh, we can apply an organism filter because we don't want the ferrets we only want the humans so let's just let's filter it down to just the human ones there you go there's a beginning so we've got gone from 293 to 195 items in our table. Um, what else can we use to filter? Um, let's have a look at the difference between. So uh, let's see if we just do NHB cells and so cell line. So add another filter. We want A549 and NHBE that reduces us down to 101 items so that's still too many and that's because there's uh although there's only 20 although there was only uh if we go back up sorry I know I'm scrolling around a bit although there was only 24 NHBE entries so that's our 24 NHBE samples there are 77 A4549 entries so uh unfortunately 
Uh, we've still got too many things here, but maybe we can just filter based on the... Let's see what else we can filter based on. Um, interesting. I'm not sure anything else is going to let us do this, so we might just have to tick them. Uh, because I think the release date of everything is the same. Yes, it is. So I can't do it based on the release date. Um, I can't do it based on the geo accession because it's not letting me. Um, I've only got those 12 features, those 12 uh, filters. So we're just going to have to tick. So let's tick everything and then let's untick the bottom two. And hopefully uh, that will be, no, it's still 99 things selected because obviously it's not, it's selected all 101 when it, okay, I'm really struggling here. Uh, let's clear the selection and let's just tick the 48 that we want. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 15, 19, 20, nearly there, or halfway there, should I say, um, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 32, 36, 40, 2, 3, 4, and 4 more. There we go. Sorry about that, a bit tedious. So we've ticked the 48. Um, so we only want the 48 that we've selected. So it's 14 gig of data, 37 gig of bases. Uh, that's the, these are the 48 items that we want to download. And I'm going to get this as, um, I'm going to grab this as a metadata file. So I'm going to save this locally, uh, but because we've got a share directory, uh, we can we can put that the the that file that we download locally we can put into our share directory um, in order to um, in order to put it onto our VM. Okay, so I'm going to download this metadata. Uh, you can download this thing called a cart file, and uh, you can use that cart file in either um, FastQ dump or SRA or prefetch. Sorry. Um, and that will tell those tools the things to download. I've never tried to do it. So at this point, I'm not going to try and, and, and fiddle around with, with a cart file to try and figure out how to use that to do the download. I'm going to do it the way that I know, which is to get the metadata and then use our command line tools to uh, process that metadata and give us a list of accessions that we can pass to FastQ dump. Okay. So I'm going to download this metadata file. And that's downloaded to my local machine. And here you can see it, uh, it, as it's downloaded, it's a, it's a uh, CSV file. And um, among other things, uh, one of the entries in that CSV file is uh, an SRR accession, which is the thing that we want to download. Okay. We've also got the in there, we've also have the GSM accession. Uh, which is repeated on multiple lines, which will allow us later on to group the SRR accession back to the GSM sample identifier. So I've downloaded that file, and I'm just going to bring up a finder window. Um, let's go find a new... There we go. Um and I'm going to navigate to my home directory. There we are. Okay, pull this into view. So, um, uh, in my home directory, so in my downloads, I will have the SRA file that I've just downloaded. Here it is, SRA run table. Actually, SRA run table two. I must have downloaded another one at another point. Uh, so this is the CSV that I've just downloaded. I'm going to drag that into my lockdown learning directory here. This is my shared uh, directory. So I'm just going to drag it into there uh, so that it's available on my virtual machine. Okay, so uh, my SRA run table into my lockdown learning directory. 
uh, and then I'm going to do another drag and drop to drop it into week four, which is where we're working currently. Um, and now I'm going to go back to my VM. And in my VM, uh, I'm going to be, I will now be ready to process, begin to process that file uh, to download the data. So we're going to write a script like we wrote last week. Uh, last week we wrote the script that downloaded the data from um, from uh, Uniprop. This week uh, we're going to write a script that's going to download the data from SRA instead. So in my present working directory now, I have that SRA run table file that I've just downloaded, and I'm just going to rename it uh, to get rid of the dash two in it, uh, so that it's probably, hopefully, then named the same way as yours. Um, and we'll just have a quick look at it and and show you that it's still the same file. It's CSV, so it's comma separated values, um, and we can pull out the accession numbers. Uh, so if you remember, we can use cut to do that. So um, let's remember what the field separator option is in cut. I think it's dash F. Um, no, it's not dash F, it's dash D for delimiter. Um, so cut dash D comma dash F. We want the first field from SRA run table. That gives me those 48 SRA accessions. It's also got a headline. So we want to remove the headline as well. So let's do that. Um, and to do that, we want to do tail that file uh, and pipe the results of tail, excuse me, into our cut. But we want to tail not the last 10 lines. We want to tail everything from the second line, so dash n plus 2 to do that. So this again harks back to lessons from previous weeks, uh, looking at these in the first times that we were looking at these tools. So using tail to remove the first line of the file. So tail dash n plus 2 gives you everything from the second line of the file to the end. Um, and then using cut to uh, separate our comma separated values and give us just the first field so that is everything up to the first comma and that's our sra accessions so that's that gives us uh, those sra uh, accessions those 48 sra accessions that we want just to check there are 48 of them let's pipe the results of that into wc l and that will tell us how many lines there are and there are indeed 48 lines so that's just checking that those are our accessions so um, there, there we're exploiting those tools that we've used previously um, and I'm just going to put that into the paste buffer um, just so I can put it into my script um, so now what we want to do is write a script that will uh, use fastq dump in the way that we used it yesterday to successfully get each of these 48 accessions and that script's going to take a little while to run so what I propose I'm going to do is I'm going to take the next 10 minutes to write it and then I will set it running and then we will check tomorrow whether it's worked. OK, so hopefully um, this it's, it's going to be a relatively straightforward script to write because it's very similar to last week's script. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a copy of last week's script and we're going to modify it. OK, so I'm going to copy from dot dot slash week three. I'm going to copy um what's it called uh it was called get uniprot data okay so that's the script that we made last week uh, which downloaded our uniprot data and made our muscle alignment so i'm going to take a copy of that script into my present working directory and this time i'm going to call it get uh, underscore sra underscore data dot sh um, so the principles of this script are going to be the same as the principles of last week's script. Um, so I'm going to now I'm going to edit the script because obviously we're going to have to make some significant changes. So um, here we go. Uh, nano get SRA data. Um, this conda activate line didn't work didn't work last week, and I haven't um, I haven't investigated why. So for now, I'm going to comment this out and we'll just have to make sure that we're in the right um, 
conda environment when we execute our script and i'll come back to that at another time um right so we want a list of our um sra ids we want a list of our sra accessions in exactly the same way as we wanted a list of our unipro accessions last week so we can use the same process we can use the same command substitution in the same way to get this list it's just that the command that we're going to use in our command substitution is a little bit more complicated than just cat and it's the command that we just wrote at the command line so um i had it in my paste buffer but i've highlighted something else so i'm going to have to go back to my command line and and grab this command so i'm just highlighting the text that I want in my paste buffer and then I'm going back to my script and if I delete the cat command and then middle click what's in my paste buffer will be pasted in so that was a click down of the scroll wheel and there you go so that is the command that we just wrote which got us our list of our SRA accessions so it's a little bit different to the cat command and we could just store the results of that command uh, in a separate file called SRA accessions or something like that, and then use cat in exactly the same way as we did with um, with our um, Uniprot accessions last week. But this this should work just as well. Um, okay, so we don't need this line because um, SRA toolkit is doing all of the work for us here, and we're not w getting from a particular URL. So I'm going to delete that line because uh, we don't need it. So for i in dollars var, this should work just as well as it did last week, but we will check first of all. So rather than doing w get, which is what we're doing here, what we actually want to do, I think, uh, the in the first instance, is just echo dollars i. So just show me um, the, the SRA, and so just make sure that we get 48 SRA entries printed out um, I'm going to just for the moment I'm going to um, comment out these other echo lines so I'm just going to paste a, a hash in front of those just so we get one line per iteration of the loop um, right we don't need to do this cat here so I'll delete that line and we don't need to do this RM either. So I'll delete that line. I'm using control K to delete the lines. If you don't remember that from last week, we're also not going to run muscle because we're not building a multiple sequence line. We're just, we are literally just downloading the data. Uh, okay. So um, we'll do downloading, just edit this. I know I'm not echoing it this time, but I will next time. So let's, do SRA entry dollars one. Right, uh, dollars I, sorry. Right, okay, so um, um, let's just do run this script. And all this is doing for each uh, of the SRA uh, identifiers that comes out of our uh, command substitution up here, this will echo the, it will just echo the accession to standard output. Um, so we're going to, uh, save, control O to save, then control X to exit. Uh, this is an executable file already because of the way that these directories work. Again, remember if we wanted to make it executable, we would do chmod user plus X um, uh, get sra data sh to make it executable for the user if you're not working uh, in a shared directory like I am. Uh, and then we're going to run it, so dot slash get sra data sh to execute our script. And this should echo me 48 different SRA um, identifiers, I hope. So it certainly looks like it has done. Um, so it's echoed the SRR uh, numbers for each... Um, for each of those lines of the file, I'm going to check that there's 48. So I'm going to again, I'm going to pipe the results of that uh, of that command into WC to tell me how many lines there are in the output, and ho I, hopefully there's 48, and there is. So that's good. Um, it's giving us 48 identifiers. The identifiers are all different, so you can see that it's incrementing by one each time. So now we need to write the the 
fastq dump command uh, that will download each of those um, each of those um, files and in order to do that I need to know what it is so I'm going to type history to show me the things that I've done uh, the, the commands that I've run in the last sort of this is the last uh, I don't can't remember how many it is by default probably a hundred um, it might be it might go all the way back actually so history shows you your last however many commands um, you can tell it how many by saying uh, so by giving it an argument so history 10 will show you your last 10 commands um, this is showing me my history up to 417 so that's how many uh, commands are in my history uh, the one that I want is uh, up a little bit there was 20 back actually so let's just rerun uh, history let's do 25 the one that I want is this one here 397 fast q dump dash dash gzip dash dash def line qual plus and then the accession. So I'm going to put that into my paste buffer again by highlighting it like that, and not the accession because I don't want to, I don't want the accession. Um, so I just highlighted the command uh, as it's going to be run, and then I'm going to go back to my script. I'm going to edit my script, and I'm going to put in place of this echo uh, on this line here. I am going to paste in that fastq dump command and then at the end of that command I want the SRA accession that I want to get which is dollars i okay so that's the that is the accession for each successive run of my for loop that changes we know that because we've just run the echo uh, so that dollars i variable changes to be the next SRA accession that we want to download. So for each of the 48 iterations of this loop, I will download a different fastq file, okay? Um, and it will download them to my current working directory. That's the way that, that fastq dump works by default. And hopefully um, what I can do is I can set this running uh, and we're just about getting to the time to finish. So uh, I'm gonna reinstate these echoes. We can set this running and hopefully by tomorrow, uh, all of these files will be downloaded. So the one that we downloaded yesterday took, um, I'm trying to remember how long it took. It took sort of 10, 10, 15 minutes maybe. So 48 of them, they're all a fairly similar size. So hopefully they should each take a similar amount of time. So to download uh, 48 at a rate of say four an hour. Uh, so we should be done in about 12 hours, I hope. Uh, for some of you that may take longer for me it may take longer i don't know and hopefully it's going to work first time as well which is not a given with with sra toolkit which is is as some of you have already found a little bit flaky so i'm going to set this off running and i'm going to keep my fingers crossed that it works uh, but if it doesn't um we can deal with that uh by i mean essentially you deal with it by rerunning it but what i'm going to what i will do tomorrow is i will add um, some clauses in here which uh, so I'll, I'm going to add add some if statements into this script so that we can rerun it without having to download all of the data that we've successfully downloaded and just download data that we haven't successfully downloaded so we'll 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 look into um, adding in some if clauses into this script to make it uh, to make it a little bit more efficient to download anything which we might which we might have missed okay so that's my script and all that remains now is for me to set that script off running uh, and hope that it that it does its job so I'm going to save it control O and enter uh, actually the other thing that I'm going to do is I am going to um, I, I will make this script available um, and maybe I can do that before I sign off um, I'll put it in a gist that's what I'll do so uh, let's um, let's open a browser. This is going to be interesting. It's more improvisation. You've had a day, uh, a, 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 an hour packed with improvisation today, uh, for which I probably should be apologising. <laughs> 
is I feel like I should maybe be better prepared uh, but hopefully you don't mind too much um, and you you're used to me by now um, uh, I think it's just github.com Yeah, so I'm going to sign in. Uh, it should be an at. It's not. Just going to get my password for GitHub because I don't know it. Excuse me, get rid of that. Here we go. Um, edit. Hello, you still hear me? Sorry, my um, my live streaming software dropped off line. Sorry about that. Um, hopefully I'm back and you can still hear me. Raise your hand if you can. Um, right, and let's just quickly type this in. So, sorry, I'm, I'm very much improvising here. 609, don't read your password out, Simon. Um, uh, God's sake. Ooh. This is very improvisy. Here we go. Um, paste. Uh, oh, let's fingers crossed that works. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Right. Okay. I'm going to do this offline. Uh, and sorry for for the for. The, uh, the way that today's lesson has gone. I'll do this offline and I'll post a, I'll, I'll post a link to everybody. Um, right, okay, so this is my script. I'm gonna save my script, control O, save it. I'm gonna exit and then I'm gonna execute it. And then I'm gonna sign off because um, I feel like today has been disjointed enough and we probably all need uh, a cup of coffee or perhaps something slightly stiffer. Right, okay, so um, we're going to run my script, get SRA data, and this will then completely fail because I'm not in the right Conda environment. Failed my own test. Conda, activate RNA seek. So there you go. That's what happens if you execute it from the wrong Conda environment. Obviously, I meant to do that. Uh, rerun the script, and now it's going to download the data. So that's off and downloading, uh, and hopefully will 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 run overnight and be done by the morning. Okay, so. With that, I will sign off. So, yes, a little bit improvisy, a little bit disjointed, and I'm sorry for that. Uh, I will try to be a slightly slicker tomorrow. Um, and um, hopefully, when we reconvene tomorrow, this data will be downloaded, and I will have a lovely folder full, a uh, directory full of um, fastq data that we can then use to do other interesting things. Okay, so um, thanks for persevering with me today, everybody. Um, and uh, I will see you all tomorrow. Uh, keep safe and see you tomorrow afternoon. Bye, everyone.